Well, I, I can see a continuous effort for incremental, if not revolutionary change, because um, the key is efficiency, is to use less materials and to use less energy for everything we are doing. And there are a lot of innovations in the field, in, in metal casting, as well as in other fields that can help metal casting achieve these kind of goals. And I think we've seen a number of papers here that deal with, uh, with, uh, with this kind of issues. But uh, most and foremost, we have to continue to improve productivity and, I repeat, efficiency in using materials and energy. Well, I'm quite fortunate to be uh, familiar with the foundry industry in the Basque country because I've been here for many years, uh, probably 10 years by now. Uh, and uh, for the last five years, every year twice. Um, and so I had the chance of visiting uh, foundries here and uh, to appreciate the technical level at which they operate, which is uh, quite high. And also, I think the human um, aspect is important. The engineers are well trained. The workforce is a wor uh, well trained workforce. And uh, the country, the Basque country also benefits uh, on this, uh, the support of Asterland, uh, this research institute that has um, very good personnel, very good equipment, uh, quite an international, rep international reputation now. And so the, uh, the combination between research and applied research and, and on technology works very well here in, uh, in the Basque country. Well, as Probably everybody noticed uh, today the, the fad, the, the fashion is to do biomaterials research and nanomaterials research. And throughout my career, which goes back longer than maybe I would like to remember, uh, I've seen other trends like, uh, for example, superconductors. And I work myself in superconductivity. And, and they are all trends and they are good, but the result of all this research then ends up with niche materials, materials that are and processes that are specific for certain limited applications. And when you compare that with metal casting, which is a technology and a field that has been around for more than 2,000 years, um, I think I see both continuing. Metal casting will continue to exist because it's the uh, fastest and cheapest way to produce um, parts. And sometimes the only way, if you look uh, at your wind turbines all around here, uh, you cannot produce those turbines without castings. There is no other way at this point. Uh, they need very large castings. And, uh, and the Basque country makes some of these very large castings, which are uh, war performance type castings. So we're going to continue uh, uh, producing materials. So, well, to put it in perspective, we change from the Iron Age to the material age. So we used to have a limited number of materials, mostly iron-based and more recently aluminum-based, that we use for a lot of applications. And now what happened, we have learned to make materials that are very specific for particular application, for small application. But the tonnage for castings has increased and it will continue to increase. Castings will be there for the foreseeable future.